I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your bullish bit brought to you by BitRefill.com, your one-stop shop to live on Bitcoin and Lightning. They've got all the best gift cards, things like Amazon, Apple, Best Buy, Airbnb, Uber, and much more. You can even do hotel bookings, you can do all of your travel, and you can now grab prepaid MasterCards as long as you have a US address that you can input. Check them out today, BitRefill.com, links are down below to sign up now. Whether it's Argentina, whether it's Nigeria, um, what's fascinating about these two countries is that, you know, in the case of Nigeria, right, they, they tried to roll out their central bank digital currency program. Uh, Argentina, you know, one of the conditions when they took the IMF bailout was that they had to, quote, de-incentivize the adoption of Bitcoin. And it looks like Nigerians and Argentinians don't care, you know, and I think the reason for that is really simple. I think, you know, when it comes to having two options, putting food on the table or listening to the guy, the talking head on TV in the suit telling you it's your patriotic duty to use money that is just like literally vaporizing in front of your eyes. Uh, you know, people are just going to follow their incentives. They're going to care about their family. And if Bitcoin is that tool where it, it enables them to provide for their family, they're going to do just that. So the adoption rate in these countries is absolutely crazy. Um, you know, it's the figures are anywhere between 25 to 35 percent. And you could be sure that a lot of those people, uh, you know, they're not just using Bitcoin. I mean, of course, we're all hardcore Bitcoiners in, in this, but the vast majority of people, let's say, in the developed world that are using Bitcoin or, you know, they see Bitcoin or they see, quote, crypto, right? They see it as a speculative asset where a lot of these people in these countries, it's the only alternative, right? So, you know, the Bitcoin virus is spreading. Uh, Bhutan, the news that was coming out of Bhutan is absolutely bonkers. They've been secretly mining Bitcoin since 2020. That was before El Salvador, I might add. We would have never found out if it wasn't for the Celsius bankruptcy. And then they just came out and said, you know what? $500 million invested. And uh, yeah, Bitcoin's, inv uh, Bitcoin's incentives stay winning. And I think anyone who fights that is going to have fun staying poor. They're just going to, the you know, Jack Mahler said it at the BP, the BPI summit. He, he like, he, he, there was a veiled threat, like right in the beginning. He's like, you know, guys, if, if you don't like, like go along with this, I'm just going to move. And then he threatened, he threatened them again later on. He said, uh, he said, you want Bitcoiners paying taxes in Texas and not Dubai. Right. So it's like two very strong statements to politicians like, look, you know, you either go with the flow or we're going to leave, you know, and that's the power of Bitcoin. And I think people are just going to wake up to that reality all around the world. Maybe I'm an absolute crazy person, but I really do believe in the theory from the sovereign individual that information technologies are going to free mankind, you know, and I think the Internet started the fire. And then Bitcoin came along and poured a drum of gasoline on that fire of freedom. And I think that's what we're living through. And boy, oh boy, is it a great ride, man. This is a, you know, they don't call it the Bitcoin roller coaster for no reason. But what a, what a time to be alive. What a privilege to be alive during these crazy, crazy times. This is the separation of money and state. And we're going to win this thing.